about it, folks. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. You can read Teddy's Tiger Forex report, folks. He puts a new issue out every Monday for subscribers. He puts out updates when warranted. He just hosted a subscriber webinar a couple weeks ago. 60-minute webinar for the second quarter market forecast. He talks about a bunch of great information in there. You get that when you sign up as well. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. You can subscribe. It's $97, folks. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You don't like it. For some reason, it doesn't fit into your trading day for whatever reason. And, folks, you're going to get value out of this newsletter, out of the webinar. But you cancel it. You get a money-back guarantee, and you get to keep all the value over that month and the webinar. And, boy, we've got a great day to talk to our man, Teddy Kegstack. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yes, we do have some good stuff to talk about. So where do you want to start uh, on a pretty active day in the markets this morning? Uh, well, we can start with the number. I think that the reaction in the markets is just showing you a really pump and dump rally, if you will, um, and especially like in the bond market. So, I mean, the reality of the number is is that, okay, we're just not increasing at the rate that we were, but we're still going full st steam ahead with inflation. So, And I think you have to really watch the, the bond market over the next couple of days because a number like this, you would expect a reactionary rally. That's because just of, the, of a, of a short-term blip of, what, of the release. As far as the overall reality the market knows that there's something wrong you know and i think i think you have to really put things in perspective if you look at like for instance numbers like cpi and stuff they're slowing but look at where look at where the yield curve is you know i mean the yields they topped out you know back in october of 2022 you know and if you look at over the past say like month or two you know we've been kind of buffering up against resistance meaning yields have been pulling back now th that's all because you have artificial buying being brought on by the fed and other central banks propping up the cash market you know and the reality is how is it after four rate hikes, you know, that the bonds are trading much higher than they were five months ago, six months ago, seven months ago? That doesn't make any sense, you know. And it also, think about what it's doing to the banks. You know, banks borrow money from the Fed, correct? You know, that's how they make loans. Now, the rate that they're paying is much higher now than it was six, seven months ago. OK, now, if you're paying more for money, the banks are and the yields are retracting, going the opposite way than they should be going, then how much money are banks making, especially when there's a banking crisis? You know, so there's there's a lot of tailwinds I think we're going to catch from this over the next couple of months, especially. And I'd be very leery of getting caught up in this frenzy, thinking that, you know, inflation is stopping. Yields are going to stay low and even possibly go lower. You know, I mean, anything can happen, but it doesn't make any sense mathematically you know and I think you're gonna see more and more where this is gonna give a boost to the dollar short term over the next few months and when it happens it's gonna be a violent reaction as well yeah you got to the dollar and it's, it's pretty interesting man the dollar it's it's interesting we're pushing kind of that low of January and you've talked to us about the different pairings and the impact and this is so euro dependent and so forth um, but it is interesting we're pushing those levels and the market reaction today uh, we've talked about it before. I know you talk about the possibility, man, that we get some hikes continuing. It's it's always interesting on mornings like this, Teddy, this is my own take, where you see the headlines from great institutions that I love, man, like the Journal, like Bloomberg, talking about inflation easing. And then you get into the core number that's at 5.5%, and we are 14 months into a hiking cycle. It's kind of amazing that you get the easing notion. And mm -hmm. I think this is something like the 10th decline in overall CPI. But as you know, man, that crude market, things get shifted around dramatically when you start bringing energy into things. The core number, 5.5, I was talking about in the beginning of my program, like five months ago, we were at about six, and that's near the peak. And so if you're just dropping mm -hmm. marginally from a peak, man, we got a long way to go, because if we can't drop from six to five quickly, what's it going to look like when we're trying going from four to three, let alone from three right. to two? Um, right. So we have we'll a long out, journey man. ahead of us. <laughs> And as traders, it's great, folks, because you're seeing the volatility everywhere. Whether you brought up bonds, I was looking at bonds when you were mm -hmm. walking us through that. Uh, I was looking at the dollar index, just magnificent moves, man, in both directions. Uh, can we jump to crude a little bit since I just brought Absolutely. up kind of some of the headlines, man? We've said, had some interesting action in crude. We hit 63 bucks after I talked to you last week, last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we've popped back kind of into that $72 range. Uh, what do you think of the price of crude? Okay, well, I mean, you got to realize we came off of, you know, when we hit that low last week, we were coming off a very big slide, you know, over the period of a couple of weeks, crew dropped 20 some dollars, you know, so the bounce off the low from last week, I think is very normal, you know, to have a correction back to where we're at, you know, sure. so I think I think that the 
the market was overdone on the slide last week. I don't think that you're going to see crude trending lower. I mean, I don't see us going down to, you know, lower six, holding lower 60s, let alone going into the 50s. I mean, the only thing that would bring that on would be a totally decrease in demand. Well, how is it we going to have a decrease in demand when we know we're coming into the summer? And if the travel and leisure business is really doing as well as they're saying, that means people yeah. are traveling. That means there's a demand for, uh, for gas and for oil, you know. So that part I don't see really trending. I see it in a, maybe in a choppy wide range trade for the next couple of months. That's possible, you know, maybe especially if there's some sort of increase in production on our end, you know, and that would really be the only thing I think that would really get us to trend lower would be obviously if they open up the floodgates and take away all these rules and regulations they put in place a couple of years ago, you know. So, so for oil, I'd, I'd be very cautious. I'd be a buyer of dips, especially, you know, when you have extremes like what we had going down last week. I mean, when you have a $20 slide in crude, you know, and it wasn't really because it wasn't it wasn't lack of demand driven, you know. So that's where I have to say that you have to be careful with it and look for more more potential to the upside. And it is interesting, man, just pulling it up on the chart. I mean, yeah, we got a little bit of an ex exacerbated low in March and exacerbated low in May. Uh, I got above 82 bucks. But this thing's almost been a consolidation since last November between right. only about like 75, 72, and 82, just remarkable mm -hmm. considering how volatile things have been overall. And since November, crude just kind of been trapped. You know, you got outside of that area a little bit, but as you mentioned, you've kind of recoiled. And I just mm -hmm. put a Fibonacci number on that pullback. Yeah, from 83 bucks down to 63, and where do we just pop to? About a 50% retracement was all it was, mm -hmm. um, up to $73. How about the yen? Can we talk a little bit of yen? Because I know uh, <laughs> that's always Absolutely. interesting for our subscribe um, listeners. Uh, what do you think of the yen pulling back today, 134.39? I think that that's all because of the number. You know, uh, th this was a very – when you have CPI is one of the biggest economic numbers that you have coming out on a monthly basis, and it's a very big interest rate number. So, it, <clears throat> excuse me, interest rates drive as a functional, functional pricing mechanism for the dollar or any currency. So when you have a big rally like this, meaning a, a, a pullback in yields, the dollar gets whacked by all currencies. You know, so that's where I mean, if you look at it, the pound made new di daily highs. The euro is coming off a new swing low, you know, and it's not and it's everything's retreating like the yen right now is is on its close to its lows for the day. You know, you saw the Aussie break out to the upside, but this is all because of that number. You know, so if the number if everyone really believes that inflation's disappearing or something like that, then it's sustainable. But it, this is just a news driven reactive day. And that's where you gotta be careful where it's where you, you buy the rumor, sell the facts. So you got the pop on the number, you know, I mean you look at the Euro it only rallied like, what was it? Something like 60, 60 pips today off that number. That's not a yeah. big move, you know? I pulled it up when you said it, the euro, and then I pulled up the pound, man. Quite quite yeah. the charts for sure. So, uh, so the, no, yen, the yen's going sideways to higher. It's just No wishing, no hoping, no praying, right? I love Correct. that last week, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Teddy, thanks so much, man. We'll talk to you next week. Have a great one, man. Thanks, Tommy. You take care. Thanks, man.